Beautiful. Number four. Jeremiah 30 verse 19. We're going for lunch, but before the lunch, there's prophecies. Amen. And out of them, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them. I will what? I will multiply them. And they shall not be few. Wow. wow. And I will also glorify them. And they shall not be small. Amen. 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 Their children also shall be as aforetime and their congregation and will be established before me. And I will punish all of them that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves and their governors shall proceed on the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near and shall approach unto me. For who is this that engage his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord. Now notice verse 19 again. I'll prophesy over this church in proper one beginning. I will multiply them and they shall not be few. <laughs> And the voice of them that make merry. No, 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 no. And I will glorify them. And they shall not be small. They shall not be small. That's what God is going to do. Are you guys dancers? Oh, you are dancers. All right. You want to show me one of your dances? You, you don't smile? No, I want to get smiles from those of you here. If you don't smile, I'm going to New Zealand. You told them to smile. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I didn't see them. Smile makes you beautiful. You get a beloved. People who don't smile don't get beloved. Hey. It is a message. It is a I will multiply. See, so God, God is saying, I'm multiply. No one can do what I'm talking about. No, no human being can do it. I cannot make the church multiply the way God wants the church. I, there's nothing I can do. There's a power that is coming, and that has already come. He said, times hundred, times hundred, hundred times one is equal to what? Hundred. I saw a building this morning, Pastor John, Bishop Bo John, how do you call that, how do you call him, Bishop John? Bishop John took me to the building, your cathedral. But you see, God is saying, I will multiply it. So it's In class two can get this answer right. Hundred times one is equal to what? Hundred. Hundred buildings. And they shall not be few. Wow. Hundred buildings. Amen. Oh, this is too beautiful. And you know what? Jesus says, I will build my church. Yes. And we have decided to join with Jesus to do his project. You are prophesying. Supposing you are a man, you go to the kitchen and you need food. Do, do men cook here? No. <laughs> oh, men cook here? Yes. Ah, men cook. Yes. And women don't cook. No. So who cooks more, men or women? Yes. Women. 
Men cook more. Women cook more. Okay, okay. Then it's just like that. Huh? Men are daddies. Huh? <laughs> Supposing you are a man, you go into the kitchen and you want to make some food because you are hungry. All right? And what food are you going to make? What food do you make in in in, in, in? <laughs> what what food do you make? What is the best food here that you make? Okay. Rice and what? <laughs> Tin fish. Yes. Tin fish. Sardines. And you mix it or what? Yes. Vegetables. Yes. And greens. Yes. Noodles. Garlic, ginger, chili, and what? Stock you. Maggie, Maggie. All right. Now, supposing I look at me, I've come to visit. Hello, I've come to visit you in Papua New Guinea, and then you come and you see me in the kitchen. Here's the rice, here's the tin fish, here's the Maggie cube. <laughs> here is the veggies, and you see that I am here. Bishop Dark, he was knows he's in the kitchen. He's hungry man. He's trying to make a uh, pot must be must be food, must be food for himself. And you come in, and then you just fold your hands like that, and you are watching me struggling with this thin fish. <laughs> How to cut the vegetables? How to remove the bones? The bones from the tin, the fish, isn't it? Yes. How to remove the bones? Because I don't like the bones. Yes, I don't like the bones at all. And you see, you just stand and just watching. Are you a good person? No. How about if you realize that what I really want is to eat some of this food? What would you do? You just come and do what I'm trying to do. Oh, take over. So please sit down. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do it for you. Relax. Relax. And we'll, we'll sort it out. You may even ask me to go out of the kitchen. But I say, no, I want to stay here and learn how to do it. It's okay. If you really want to stay, you can stay. But we are, you just sit down. We can do this for you. Five minutes, we'll be done. Rice and tin fish. Is that what you call it? Yes. Triple seven. That's okay. Triple seven. What is made of triple seven? What is seven? Mackerel. Oh, chef, no. Tomato sauce. Yes. So what color is the whole thing when it's finished? Is it still white? What color is it? It's like curry stew. And you, and you see, I'm, you see, I'm struggling. Eh? I'm struggling to do what? To make triple seven. Tin fish and rice. The, the, the thing um, is white. And the class didn't be white. And the person has folded their hands and looked at And watch it. How do you think? As I, I'll be looking at. Come, three girls, come. Three of you, come. Come, one, two, three. Yeah, just one, two, three, come. Come, come on stage here. Stand here. And watch me, eh? I'm trying to cook and these girls are just oh, 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 oh. Then I, I don't even know if I'm going to check on YouTube how to how to make tin fish in one YouTube And you're on your phone. Give them phones. Give them phones. Please, I want to Google it. How to make tin fish? Look at it. Now I have, I have Google it. Tuna. So I'm trying to see how to do it. Hey, and you girls are on your phone. You can see I'm struggling. I'm struggling to organize this thing. And you girls are 
on your phone. You don't care about me. I've come here to preach and I just need to make some tame fish and run. I'm checking YouTube and I'm not seeing this lady. She's talking too much. So I'm going to Google it. How to make still on your phone tin fish. How to make tin fish curry. How to make tin fish biryani. How to make tin fish cakes. How to make tin fish. I don't even know which one to press. I don't even know which one to press. Which one should I press? Tin fish, tin fish curry. How to make tin fish curry. But I thought I was making tin fish curry with rice. Or I will mix it all. You see, I don't even know. You guys are just standing there. You are not helping. You are not helping. I'm struggling. Ah. Oh, this is serious. Are these even Christians? Would you call them Christians? My church and I'll build my church in Papua New Guinea. And then we sit and we are folding our hands and we are watching Jesus as he's struggling to find somebody who is going to help to do his church. What he has said is his vision and his dream. And you are standing by watching that Jesus is good, and I'm sure he will find a way to build his own church. Interested, like what? What is he doing? What is it? I mean, it has nothing to do with us. And you see that I'm hustling. You can see that I'm struggling. I check YouTube. I couldn't find it. Now I check this one. I don't know whether it's biryani or curry or whatever. And as I found it, there are so many options, so many results. What is it? Thousand, whatever, million response. What? Seventeen million, seventeen point six million responses. Of how to make tin fish. 17. Which of the 17 million should I choose to guide me as to what I should? There are 17.6 million responses. They are studying what? Are they studying there? Fold their arms as Jesus trying to build his church in the nations, and we don't even care. We don't even care about church things. No, no, no. It's, it's very serious. For Jesus to have said, this is the only one thing I said, I will build my church. And it's not, it, when he says, I will build my church, listen, let me tell you girls something. Let me teach you something. No, I want to tell you something. If you see me trying to cook, it means cook. It means I'm telling you to take over. And you, to, you come to me and say, excuse me, please. Thank you for coming. We have rice here. We'll do it. I do rice. She's going to do it. You can't just stand there on your phone. Yes. The, the, the fact that I haven't asked you, please, what's your name? Tracy. Please, Tracy, I beg you. Help me to make tin fish. I beg you, make me tin fish. I want to eat tin fish. Help me, Tracy. Please, Tracy. I love you, Tracy. Help me to make the tin fish. I have to beg you. I have to lie down and beg you before you, you will help me. Don't you see me struggling there? Tracy, what I am struggling there, it means help me. That's what it means. It means take over. That's what it means. And, and what's your name too? Huh? Zilda. Zilda. Let this be the last time you stand there with your folded arms. Watching us struggle to make tin fish. It's a mess. I didn't even know there was a food called tin fish. Huh? I mean, where were you trained? What type of bad, bad manners and bad laws? It's like you are not trained at all. And what's your name? Keta. 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 <laughs> this is what God looks at and then he says to these people, now, I'm going to call one more person here. Okay, they look down. You, my dear, you come. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ah. Now, 
What's your name, my dear? Marcia. Marcia. Oh, now. Okay, you heard all the preaching. Mm-hmm. So you know what? Okay, so I'm starting. I'm making. I'm trying to do something. So. I'm making twin fish. Yeah. Huh? Huh? What do you want to do? Uh, what is it? Ego sit down. I'll do this for you. You do it for me. I just sit down. No matter, I saw many. Which one should come? And help me to help me to do. Oh, you don't need to check this. Yeah, no. I don't need to check this. Am I am I taking the wrong thing? Huh? Yeah. I'm reading the wrong thing, right? Yeah. So what should I do? I'm struggling. I'm mean, I mean, Papa, you give it here. It's okay because I really know how to do it. You know how to do it. So how many minutes? Because I'm really hungry now. These people, they don't care about me. These people, they don't care. These people, they don't care. They don't care about all that I'm doing. They don't care about my struggles. I have to beg them. This one, I knelt down before her. I knelt down crazy. I knelt down and begged her. And she was still on her phone after. So you said your name is Marcia. Yeah, Marcia. So what? what? Yeah. I'll do it for you. You do what for me? I'll cook for you. You cook for me. Would it be nice? Can you do it well? Yeah. Wow. Will you have to call your mother to ask her to help her? No. You do it yourself. So where should I sit? You want to get a chair? You want to bring a chair? Okay, mom, get the chair. She says I should get her. I should sit down. Yeah. I should sit here. Okay. Marcia, I should sit. Okay. Go. Go, 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 go. Thank you, Marcia. I'm just resting. So you can just hang around. <laughs> now I'm walking up. So, ah. I know I've decided I want to marry somebody from Papua New Guinea. Because you know I'm in a situation. I'm in a situation now. I remember somebody who made some nice tin fish for me. To choose somebody. <laughs> now, uh, Pastor. Pastor, you remember when the, that day I came to Papua New Guinea, there was this young lady. She came, to, she saw I was struggling, and uh, she didn't help at all. There were about three of them. Do you remember their names? What, what, what are their names? What are their names? Because you see, I have in my mind, I feel I want to marry somebody from Papua New Guinea. to make a mistake because what they did to me in those days ah so what are their names again Tracy Aha. I don't want Tracy at all what Zilda Zilda no no I don't want Zilda she was Kita she was folding her hands she was folding uh-huh. But there was somebody who helped me very much. She, I didn't even ask her. What do you remember her name? Masha! Can you give me Masha's number? I want to call Masha. Can you give me Masha's number? I want to call Masha. Zero zero what? Four four five six seven nine. Oh, I need another microphone, please. I need another microphone. Wow. Oh yes. Oh, give up. Hello. Uh huh. 
Give the microphone to uh, I'm going to Pashiati. Uh -huh, yeah. All right. Now. Hello, Marsha. Is it what? Uh, uh, can I speak to uh, Sister Marsha? It's me, Marsha. It's you, Marsha. Marsha, I'm sure you are not expecting a call from me, isn't it? Yeah. No, her volume is off, please. Hello, Marsha. Yeah. Are you still on the line? Yeah. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. What? Hey, volume people, I can't hear you. This is a bad WhatsApp call, eh? The network is terrible. Hello? Hello. Ah, Masha, you, you remember me, right? Hello? Yeah. Yes, Masha. Masha, how old are you now? I'm uh, 17. Oh, no, you've grown since then. You were 17 now. <laughs> You're now 36 years old. <laughs> hey! Masha, I'm sure you're not expecting me to call, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Masha, you know, no. yesterday I had a dream. <laughs> I saw I was sitting in a chair. And there was somebody sitting by me. And the person was laughing all the time. Ah, she was very happy. But I couldn't see her face. So I woke up from the dream and I couldn't see who the person was. So then I prayed, I said, Oh Lord. I didn't see the face of the person. So I slept, fell asleep again. And I had the same dream. Wow. And this time I could see the color of the person, but I couldn't see the face. So I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, let me see who it is. Then when I fell asleep again, and then I saw the face and I said, this is the girl who helped me to make the thing fast. Wow. So anyway, Masha, I don't want to bother you, but pray about it in the spirit. Yes. Pray about it in the realm of the spirit. But I remember that that day you helped me to make the team fish. I saw that you had a spirit of a helper. Yes. And you see, when Adam was in the garden, Message. Masha, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I can't hear you. Hello? 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 Are, are, are you still there? Did you hear what I said while the phone went off? Yeah. You heard it? Yeah. Uh-huh, okay. So, you know, anyway, I don't want you to be confused. Talk to your bishop. Eh? Explain to him the dream. Three dreams. And uh, I'm sure I'll call you again later. All right? What a, call. what a call! Now these ones. Oh. Uh, well, I don't want to hear of them. <laughs> so Jesus will be calling you with a special call. So that you, you the one, the one who helped me to build my church in Papua New Guinea. When I said I'll build my church. Amen. When I said I'll build my church. I said I'll build my church. Huh? I said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against me. And they were sitting down as if they don't understand English. But this one, this one, he said, I will build, as if it was his own building. Ah, Masha, thank you. You know, when you made the tea fish for me, it was as though you were going to eat it yourself. Yeah. Like, I like the way energy. 
You remember how you were walking up and down like a lot of activity. And then it was also very fast. Yeah. You know, I remember a brother, he went to visit his sister at 10 o'clock in the morning. And she said to him that she's making something, not tin fish, but it's called jollof rice. Yeah. By 7 p.m. it was not ready. How, how long does it take you to make your tin fish? Five minutes. Does tin fish take only five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, really? Ah, you have to come and teach us in Ghana how to make food in five minutes. You never forget, you never forget the people who help you to do something that is not for them. Eh? That is for the person you are helping to do. You will remember. What one, one uh, Uncle James, a man who helped me in the ministry, you know, he told me something. He said, Service is beautiful. Yeah. Anybody yeah. who serves you, you will like the person. Right. That is why people fall in love with their mates. Wow. Yeah, because the person who serves you becomes nice to you. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, those who don't like to serve. Oh. <laughs> I said, those who don't like to serve. They know themselves. Yes. They like just on the phones. But you don't want to serve. You'll be surprised that your husband will fall in love with the person who is serving him. Yes. Amen. Service is beautiful. Amen. Yes. Service makes you beautiful. He that loves me shall be loved of my father. And I will come to him and make our body out. You, you will be loved by the Father. God will choose you to love you. Yeah, yeah. I told one pastor whose heart was broken because he had been through a terrible time. I told him, he doesn't know. I said, God really likes you. Because sometimes when you go through things, you think God doesn't like you. I said, God really loves you. You are one of his favorites. His favorites. Yeah. yeah. He that has my commandment, he is that loves me. He that loves me will be loved of by my father. My father will love him. And we will come to him and make our abode with him. So for me, you know, I'll tell you, all my life has been church. So even the tragedies and the difficulties that I've seen, I see through it that actually it is God's love for me. Yeah. I see through it all. That is God, I there's something that I don't have or I don't know. He's loving me through all that. That like he loves me because I love him. Wow. And he has decided to love me and make his abode with me. Yeah. Honestly, this thing that you are seeing today can happen. It can happen like that. The one who took up the work and said, Leave it to me, please. That he sit down. I want to, to sort out everything, but I don't I can't stand it that you are doing what you are doing. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. That should be your attitude. I can't stand it. I can't I can't I can't take it. I will want to do your way. I will build your church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'll build your church right here in Papua New Guinea. Amen. And wherever else you want me to build it, I will build your church. Then you watch and see God Himself will love you. Ah, He will love you back. Amen. I like the way He said, He will love you. He will come to you. He will make His abode with you. He will stay with you. He will stay in your house <laughs> and bless you. Amen. Amen. How many years will we we'll be standing with Him? And some of us will be wishing, Lord, I want to go back to do some more. Amen. Amen. John 14, 23, 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he is alive. He that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. And I will do what? 
I will love him. So you girls, you see, you, you are not cursed to. But when I decided to love somebody, I decided to love myself. I was in my house when I felt like loving somebody. And I remember the one who served me, helped me. Service is beautiful. That's what I put into. Service is beautiful. Ah, you see today, modern wives. They say, you do this, I'll do this. You do this, I'll do this. You do this, I'll do this. You know, you, you, you don't understand why love becomes just something that is in a book. It moves out of real life and becomes just a theory. Because so many elements that make you lovable and that make somebody want to love you, we take them out. Instead of serving and taking over for somebody, we want the person to beg you or make a contract. Or if I do this for you, do this for me. Yeah. One day a lady came to work in the church and she gave her salary, her conditions. I said, no, we cannot. I'm not used to that. <laughs> I've not done it before. This is what I expect. Hey, what about if we cannot? So, let's give ourselves wholeheartedly to this glorious mission unreservedly. Amen. 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 How many are going to join in this prophetic vision? Don't let God kneel down and beg you for anything. No, no begging. No begging. Okay? No begging from God or God's servants. No talking plenty. No meetings. Just doing. Just what? Doing. Doing. Doing His will. Doing the church. And then God is going to bless you. Learn these keys. Learn these keys. Learn these keys. Yeah. That's why many marriages, the juice is gone. You see, like meat, you can have meat. You know, one day I went to Argentina and uh, they brought some steak. Mm. <sighs> I've not eaten that again. <laughs> because where I know where they make me this dry hard. It's different. And when they brought the food, I was waiting. Is there potatoes? Is there salad? There's nothing. Said, this is it. But I hadn't cut. When I started after today, I cannot forget it. Wow. Yes. People have their marriages, the juices are out. It's made up of a hard meat. <laughs> <laughs> the sweetness and the tenderness and the juice of the mariage is changed. It's changed. Wow. Every standing. Lift your hands and thank the Lord. Thank you. How many are frightened by this vision? How many are scared by it? How many realize that we've been standing by when Jesus is trying to build his church? Yes. Mm. Lift your hands and ask the Lord.
Father, I thank you for the blessedness of building your church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Guide us by the Holy Spirit. Let us do your perfect will. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. We are going for lunch, but we have not yet gone. Jeremiah chapter 3, prophecy number (laughs) 5. Have you corrected the music? Is it going to work better this time? Try. I will build my church. I will give you pastors according to my heart. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Children, thank you. You can go sit down. Wow. Love for them. We are going to be closing in a few seconds, minutes, moments. But until then, we have not yet closed. Now, I want you to see that this is another prophecy. Jeremiah 3.15 I will give you pastors according to my heart. So God is going to release pastors in Papua New Guinea after God's own heart. And they are going to feed with knowledge and understanding. You see the Macarius? How many have noticed the Macarius? How many have the Macarius? How many know what the Macarius is? Raise up your hand. Please respond to my questions. How many don't know? Only three people know. One, two, three, four. These are even not from here. Five, six, seven, eight. Macarius, raise your hand if you know Macarius. Yes, it's full of knowledge and understanding. Amen. Yes, and he says, I'm going to give you pastors who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what they'll be doing. They'll be giving you knowledge and you will understand a lot of things. Amen. This is a group that are going to be released into Papua New Guinea. Amen. This group are going to walk through the length and breadth of Papua New Guinea. Amen. They are going to give knowledge, they are going to give understanding. Amen. Verse 16. Beautiful. And it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days. So when there is a release of new pastors who feed with knowledge and understanding, it is going to result in multiplication and increase in the land. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Says the Lord. Amen. And they shall say no more. They won't say any more that the ark of the covenant, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, nor visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. They're not going to remember some of the old things. Because the pastors who feed with knowledge and understanding are going to cause increase. You see, anytime there's a church and there's a pastor and he's feeding knowledge and understanding, the church grows. That's why even prophets, they, many prophets don't have big churches. They can have fantastic word of knowledge and do miracles, but the churches don't grow. Like that. To grow the church is Jeremiah 3.15. I'll give you pastors who will feed the people with knowledge and with understanding. And after that, you will be multiplied and increased. So people, you, you, you see, they think that, oh, when you are giving 25 points, ah, it is laborious. It is like this. It is like that. What is the point of it? It is not prophetic. It is not powerful. But that is the knowledge and that is the understanding. And that is what actually leads to the increase and the multiplication. Yes. 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 That's actually what leads to uh, increase. Yes. Is it amazing? It's amazing. Is it fantastic? It's fantastic. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This is beautiful. It is beautiful. I will give you pastors. Wow. I will give you pastors. Wow. I will give you pastors. Wow. And in this, I'm going to lay hands on everybody wow. in this. As I'm praying for you, as I'm preaching to you, huh? God is going to bless you. He's blessing you already with knowledge, with understanding. Yeah. Huh? And you become the person who stands to give knowledge and understanding to the people. Oh, so beautiful. It is so attractive. It is gentle but attractive. It's what? 
Gentle but attractive. It's gentle because you don't realize what is happening to you. <laughs> you see, when somebody is feeding you with knowledge and understanding, you don't realize the person is influencing you even. Because you are just amazed by the knowledge and the understanding that keeps coming into Amen. you. So gradually you are being influenced. And that's what happens when God brings up the pastor. That's why to be a pastor is a profession on its own. Yes. I'm a medical doctor, but I practice pastoring. Wow. I, my practice is pastoring, not medicine. Oh yes, I became a doctor on the 10th of March, 1989. Around 4 p.m. That is when I became a doctor. Since then, I've been a medical doctor, but I've been practicing pastoral work, ministry. I feed with knowledge and understanding. What is that? Ah, these are people who are coming. Oh, okay. I thought there were people that were going. I thought maybe they were annoyed with my preaching. They got up and said, well, we are, we are going out of here. <laughs> Oh yes. oh yes. Ah, you guys have been giving knowledge and understanding for the whole morning. Yes. You are even late. You missed Marcia. You missed Marcia. You missed Tracy. And Zilda. And who? Keita. Yes, you missed them. You don't know what you missed. You missed a very major revelation. Yes. He missed Boyo and his team. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Knowledge and understanding. You see, when a, a man stands to give knowledge and understanding, it is very subtle or it's like you don't know what is happening to you, but you are being influenced. Amen. A lot of people don't know why a lot of people listen to me or follow me. Because when is somebody put on a television and said, ah, is this preaching? This is not preaching. This is talking. He's just talking. <laughs> but you see, that's how knowledge and understanding is. He's just talking. Maybe he's not shouting. Yeah, maybe he's talking. Or maybe you, you, you are laughing. You're talking, knowledge is fantastic. Knowledge makes you laugh and makes you ashamed and makes you shy and makes you different. Yes. Oh, yes. Knowledge and understanding. And it causes the church to multiply and to increase. This is my first time in Pondigiri. And all of you are my children and my members. I've not been here before. I've not been here before. So even from afar, Knowledge and understanding has a certain effect. Yes. People don't know what is in the macarius, the books and the messages. People don't know what is in it. It is something that has generated churches, pastors, and congregations all over the world. And as I'm standing here and I say, 100 buildings. You can write it somewhere, you see. God will bring 100 buildings. Buildings will be built here. If you ask me why, I, I also don't know why. I also don't know why. Because I've been told in any country that you have 100 buildings before. Wow. I don't know any, any country like that. I don't know any country that I've ever said. It's not like I, I go to every country and I say, You have 100 buildings. You have 100. Since I was born, after, I was born 1963 up to today. This is the first time that I'm going to. On an island, on an island, on an island, on an island. Amazing. I don't even know where the money is going to go. I don't need to know where the money is going to come from. God is going to provide. And God is going to raise up Papua New Guinea pastors. Yeah, who are going to feed people with knowledge and understanding. Yes. Because Jesus is the answer. And Jesus, and he said that, and the gospel will be preached. The gospel will be preached. There will be pastors preaching and teaching all over the world. Yes. And then the end will come. 
Yes. So we'll be preaching, we'll be traveling, we'll be praying, we'll be teaching, and then the end will come. Amen. It's not as though the church will become quiet. The church will be preaching and teaching and preaching and teaching and building and preaching and teaching, and then the end will come. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 16. Verse 16, the next verse. Alright? And it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increase. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 17. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord. Neither shall they walk anymore after the imagination of their evil hearts. Now, when the greatness of the church and the pastors are going, people will now not walk after the imagination of their evil hearts. But the knowledge and understanding that you get from the church, they'll be following that knowledge and understanding. Amen. So people don't have to now, what do you imagine? What do you think? Now you think, ah, maybe I am this, then you change into that. Or, or different ideas come to you. Ah, maybe we should kill somebody. Maybe we should uh, change somebody. We should do uh, any imagination. No, because people will have knowledge Amen. and understanding. Amen. Knowledge Amen. and understanding. Yes. So where people don't have knowledge and understanding, what does the Bible say? They walk after the imagination of their evil hearts. This was happening in the world. People are walking after the imaginations of their evil hearts. Because they don't have knowledge and understanding from God. Yes. Amen. Preach. Are you with me? So that is why the prophecy starts from verse 15. It ends in verse 18. But it starts from verse 15. Verse, are you watching? We are going for lunch. Oh. We are going for lunch. This is a pre-lunch revelation. I'm telling you, this is a pre-lunch revelation. Very important for you to get this before lunch. Yes. <laughs> Are you watching? I will give you pastors. I will give. Receive, Father, thank you for more than 500 pastors from Papua New Guinea. 500 pastors. We have prophesied them into existence. And what are these pastors going to do? They are coming to drive new cars and expensive, uh, what do you call it? Wow, they are coming to give knowledge and understanding. Then what is going to happen in verse 16? What's going to happen in verse 16? They will be multiplied and increased in the land. Everybody's going to church multiply. Because it's a gentle, like it's like gentle rain. You know, when I went to uh, Israel, I learned something. They had they said they invented the drop technology. You know how that works? They have uh, that's how they water. So even though it doesn't rain. They have a pipe, a small, like a little hose, with little holes in it, that it waters the plant at the base of the plant, so drops, you see. So that's what I'm explaining. So that's how come they are the ones who produce all these vegetables, and even in the desert. Because they invented the drip, I think they call it drip technology. Yeah. So you see, although it's just little drop, 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 that's what makes everything green. So you sit in the church, although you have drip, 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 teaching little like, drop, 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 drop. It is, it is making you green. It's making. That's how come Israel is able to produce, and nobody else does it. They're able to produce green. And when you go to Dubai, a lot of the places that are green, they use this. It's from Israel. Yeah. They do it here too. Yeah. They're saying Israelis. Yes. Multiply and increase. Verse 17. And then they shall not walk after the imagination of their hearts. You see that? Yes. You not just follow your ideas. You don't have to watch Oprah Winfrey or any of these talk shows to know what imagination of what to do. You have the word of God. And verse 18 brings us to the conclusion. In those days, 
the house of, of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. And they shall what? Come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance to the Father. So there's a coming together. And there's a gathering, fusion, and gathering together. Hallelujah. 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 So this is fantastic. Amen. Amen. This is fantastic. And I know that I see many, many pastors being released. Amen. Amen. Prophecy number six. How many prophecies do you have? Oh, only five out of 25. No, that's serious. The six. And number six. There shall be a rise of teaching priests. Teaching priests. Everybody say teaching priests. Second Chronicles chapter 15 verse 3. Now for a long season, Israel had been without a true God and without a teaching priest. <clears throat> wow. Wow. Without a what? A teaching priest. What's a teaching priest? And without law. But listen, let go to the next verse. But when they in their trouble did turn to the Lord, God of Israel, and sought him. He was found of them. Oh yes, and in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon the inhabitants of the countries, and nation was destroyed of nations. Amen. Amen. Now, there will be no more vexations in Papua New Guinea. Amen. I said there will be no more what? Vexations. vexations. Because there's going to be the release of teaching priests. Amen. Now what's a teaching priest? Listen, a priest is someone who intercedes. So, a, a priest is a praying person. Now some pastors are not prayerful. So they, are, they don't have the priest's anointing. When it's only when a pastor becomes prayerful that he operates like a priest. Because a priest goes every day on behalf of the people to offer sacrifices. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 2, 3, 4. That's a priest. Now, once you have a prayerful man, and then he also teaches, you got magic. That's what's called a teaching priest. Yes. So you have people who teach, but they are not priests. And you have people who are priests, but they don't teach. So a teaching priest, look at Hebrews 5. This is a priest who can have compassion on the ignorant. All right? And on them that are without sin. By reason thereof, he ought to ask for the people for himself to offer for sins. He is always standing there offering. That was what Zachariah was doing when he was made the father of John the Baptist. He was in the temple offering his bread. A priest goes on behalf of the people. Lord, they are all bad people in town. Lord, forgive them. Forgive them. That's the work of a priest. When it's combined with teaching, it's an explosion. Wow. Yes. When we started the flow prayer meeting, there are many people in Ghana who didn't know us. When they started watching the flow prayer meeting, I heard many times a comment say, Ah! I never knew that he prays like this. I never knew that. Ah, this, ah, so this is how he is. I never knew that he prays or that they have prayer or they pray or they pray in that way. Yes. Because people don't know that I'm a teaching priest. Yeah. It's a special grace to be both prayerful and also teaching. God is going to release teaching priests in Papua New Guinea. And God is going to use teaching priests to do his work. Amen. Stand to your feet. I told you it's a pre-lunch revelation. Amen. Father, I give you thanks and praise. For these last four hours that we have been here. 
and you have prophesied to us the greatness of the church that is to come. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for touching our lives. Thank you for healing us, <coughs> blessing us, and building your church in Hawaii, New Guinea, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a clap. Of Sit down, everybody. I want you to take out a good offering. Amen? Uh, an offering that can help to build the church and also to encourage the camp meeting. How many know that the camp meeting costs money? Mm-hmm. Only four people know things. I think in Papua New Guinea, when I asked you a question, you decided that you will not help me. <laughs> Marcia, where are you? Come, I need you. I need you because you are my only helper here now. Oh, yes. Ah, you see, I remember her. Was she the one who made a tin fish for you? She's the one who said I should sit down. I should relax. She sort it out. Beautiful. Now, take out your special offering. Everyone giving an offering. You give by mobile money as well. Or oh, cash. More cash. All right, but you have a mobile thing as well. Yes, everybody take out cash, whatever you have. I'm going to pray about what's what I'm going to sing. I'll build your church. All right, let's see the sounds. Ah, Marcia is helping. You see, she's helping with the microphone, she's helping on stage, she's answering questions. Any question I want, I just ask her. I'm not asking you guys. <laughs> Do they have mobile money? Do they give through the mobile money as well? Okay, so she says yes. I won't ask you people again, I'll just ask Marcia. Marcia loves me. You see, I'm already concluding that she loves me. Because of the way she answers and she's flowing. You get it? So that's how, that's how people get chosen. Some of you are wondering, why hasn't anybody proposed to me? It's because you are not helpful. It's true. You are just on your phone and buying hair and clothes. Hmm. Lift your offering up. Father, thanks for this great and powerful offering. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alright, let's welcome the offering and I will build your church. Thank mm-hmm. you.